solid as a rock, tougher than granite, and seemingly impervious to the sands of time, there's nothing quite like a Mercedes G-Class. It remains politically incorrect and hugely expensive, but it's now a much more credible alternative to less unique super luxury large SUVs thanks to modern era engineering adopted in a way that hasn't diluted this Galander wagon's unique character. You know the real thing when you see it and when it comes to supremely capable large SUVs this is the real thing, the Mercedes G-Class. In this second generation, guys, introduced in 2018, virtually everything has changed. The body, the suspension, the steering, the engines, all of it's new. Even the classic ladder frame chassis has been updated. But at the same time, almost nothing about the character of this W463 series model is different. And the result is as unique as this car has always been. The G stands for Gelandewagen, usually shortened to G-Wagen, the name roughly translating as Go Anywhere Car. And go Anywhere in this case, meaning just about any inhospitable part of the globe that you can think of, from the Sahara Desert to the Siberian Arctic. Ordinary luxury SUV buyers, in other words, need not apply, and yet they do. Over 40 years after it was originally launched for Cold War military use, as well as civilian transport, the G-Class these days uh, enjoys an ever more popular fresh lease of life as a fashion icon that you're as likely to find on the King's Road as the Kalahari. This hand-built off-roader is the longest-serving passenger car that Mercedes-Benz has ever made, the only one without a production end date and a track record that includes everything from the transportation of two popes to an outright win in the grueling Paris-Dakar rally. The G-Wagen story dates back to 1972 and a suggestion by the Shah of Iran, who was at the time a significant Mercedes shareholder, that the company should create a military 4x4. Now this was satisfied by a collaborative design created by Daimler-Benz and Steyr Daimler-Pusch, uh, now Magna Steyr, who've assembled the uh, Gelandewagen near the Austrian city of Graz ever since. Civilian orientated 460 and 461 series models were produced from 1979 before the original version of this more civilized 463 series design was first launched in 1990. Uh, the three decades since have seen this car successfully overcome any obstacle it's encountered, including obsolescence. Turn of the century plans to kill it off in favour of more modern luxury SUV designs like today's Mercedes GLS model were wisely shelved. And today the g Wagen is more popular than it's ever been. It remains the forefather of all SUVs to wear the three-pointed star, which is why all Mercedes off-road models feature an uppercase G in their name. Uh, current buyers choose between a straight six G350D diesel variant or this wildly powerful G63 AMG twin turbo petrol V8 model. Either way, you get the luxury of a Range Rover with the wilderness capability of a Land Rover Defender, the street presence of a supercar with the sense of a large SUV. In short, as we said, there's nothing quite like the G-Class and we're gonna test it. It's easy to see why celebrities and the super rich stump up supercar money for a G-Wagen. There's nothing quite like it. The door with its fat black button opens like that of a bank vault. And inside you sit higher up than in any other 4x4, looking down imperiously on a sea of pretend SUVs not fit to soil this Jolanda Wagen's mud flaps off the beaten track. HEV style bonnet mounted indicators mark the perimeters of a square stolid shape that promises to severely frighten any unfortunate super mini that you bear down on in the fast lane. As at the wheel, you get ready to command both the road and your destiny. Just as a Ferrari makes you feel like Fernando Alonso in a G-Class, you're suddenly a UN peacekeeper in Sarajevo, or you're in command of an Iraqi combat unit clearing insurgents on the road to Fallujah. It's brilliant. 
Historically, in a Jolanda Wagen, all of this has been expected to compensate for a pretty atrocious tarmac driving experience. Uh, now, you just won't understand just how big a step forward this new generation version is if you haven't experienced that. Um, previous models, while well, they lumbered and they lurched about so much that they were almost never purchased as only car transport, uh, they didn't lack power, but the vagueness of the old recirculating ball steering and the fact that the slightest bump would throw you off course meant that only brave or foolhardy drivers could ever make full use of it. Before trying this new era model, we wondered just how much would really have changed. After all, conceptually, it does remain pretty old hat, built on a solid ladder frame chassis like a 19th century carriage. Add in an old fashioned live rear axle, a prodigious two and a half ton curb weight, and the need for uncompromised off road antics, and you'd expect much the same kind of brawny behemoth that uh, Mercedes served up before. And yet, what we've got is something quite different. Uh, quite different for a G-Wagen anyway. I mean, it still won't keep a Range Rover or something like a Bentley Bentayga in sight around a twisting B-Road, but it now won't be left floundering either. Now there are quite a few reasons why. The front suspension, the steering system, uh, the gearbox and the engines are all completely new, as you might be surprised to learn, is all the familiar looking bodywork. Copious amounts of aluminium and a redesigned version of that rugged chassis have reduced curb weight by 170 kilos. And this, combined with all the uh, engineering changes, is enough to transform the way that this Jolanda Wagen tackles the only kind of terrain that it previously struggled to conquer, tarmac. Previously, corner turning required a degree of guesswork. Such was the delay between turning the front wheel and front end response. And it was necessary to start applying lock a few meters away from any given turn and then begin releasing it halfway through the corner. Uh, now it actually feels like there's a physical connection between the front axle and the new electromechanical rack and pinion steering. Uh, there still isn't very much feedback through the wheel, but it is good enough to allow you to feel like you're driving a car rather than some kind of agricultural vehicle. Even the way that the body rolls now instills you with a bit more confidence. Um, if you are unwise enough though to start chucking your G-Wagen about, it'll still pitch about like a ship in a choppy sea, but there is a degree of control about the whole thing that was well, just missing before. The initial role is now there merely to discourage you from being silly. If you push on through it, you'll actually find out that the car hangs on pretty well and it tracks quite faithfully to the desired course. You're going to want to know about the new engines. Now, if you've been listening to the background entertainment on offer, you probably won't need telling that we've selected the full fat AMG petrol version here. Uh, that's mainly because, a uh, little inexplicably, it is the one that the majority of buyers in our market choose. Now, on the face of it, putting a 585 horsepower engine into a luxury SUV that's shaped like a portico and sounds like a pretty bad idea. Uh, no, scrub that. It sounds like an absolutely certifiable no but Mercedes has done it anyway, reasoning correctly that oligarchs and squillionaires will find the idea of a Jolanda wagon powered by the 4-litre twin-turbo V8 from the AMG GT supercar almost impossible to resist. The old AMG version had a 5.5 litre V8, but this lighter, torquier unit puts out 85 horsepower more and clouts the G63 to 62 in just 4.5 seconds and on to an electronically limited top speed of 137 miles an hour or 149 miles an hour if you're crazy enough to pay Mercedes 2,000 pounds more to de-restrict it, in which case you really have got more money than sense. Perhaps though, the whole point of enormous wealth is indulging your inner fantasies. And the way that this hand-built V8 explodes under heavy acceleration in a frantic volley of noise all the way to the point where it crashes against a 7,000 RPM rev limiter is certainly addictive. And it gives this car the kind of charm it would need to offer if your other SUV VIP choices included a Lamborghini Urus or a 12-cylinder Bentley Bentayga. Uh, you'll get to enjoy the engine much more once you get the hang of all the different drive systems. As part of the g Wagen redesign, Mercedes has added in its Dynamic Select setup, which in its top Sport Plus setting ramps up the throaty note of the AMG Sports exhaust, 
Uh, there are also the usual sport comfort and individual options plus there's an extra slippery mode for rainy days and icy mornings all the choices that you can make here affect throttle response uh, steering feel stability control settings and the shift timings of the new 9g tronic auto gearbox that all g models now get and which features in a g63 in more sharply focused speed shift form uh, dynamic select can alter suspension feel too because another thing that this new era model can now offer is is adaptive damping and that's a standard feature for a Mercedes AMG model and it's a virtual must-have option elsewhere in the range Ah, yes, the rest of the range. Well, there's actually only one other model for our market anyway, and it's the one that you'll choose if some element of common sense is a criteria in purchasing your Gelander wagon. Uh, the G350 D variant in question gets the most powerful diesel power plant ever fitted to a G-Class, uh, 282 HP, 2.9 litre straight six, borrowed from the S-Class saloon, hence its much greater refinement. This engine replaces the old 210 horsepower 3 litre V6 that was used before. Uh, the claimed rest of 62 miles an hour time falls from 9.1 seconds to just 7.4, and there's a 124 miles an hour top speed and 50 newton meters more pulling power, too. That latter figure is still not enough to match the 850 newton meter torque reading of the petrol V8, but 600 newton meters of grunt is plenty, and the more tractable diesel unit makes it more usable. That'll be welcome if you'll be exercising the three and a half ton towing capacity that both G-Class models can offer or when you're merely cruising about on your commute. But of course, this isn't a commuting car. It is instead the final jigsaw piece for many a millionaire's ultimate multi-car garage. Not to sit inside it with the Maseratis and the Maybachs, but to guard the place parked out front, covered in muck, battered happily by wind and rain. Uh, and you'll want to get this car covered in muck as often as possible if you're going to really enjoy owning it. Most luxury SUVs, however potentially capable, don't take kindly to that, and their owners end up finding that off-road excursions just aren't worth the hassle of scraped doors and scratched alloys and cracked spoilers. Uh, the G-Class, it's different. It's properly capable with plenty of ground clearance, which is why it can ford 700 millimeters of standing water. Plus, of course, it's equipped with a proper, tough, low-range transfer case that gives you another nine low-range range gears in sticky terrain. But that's just the start. This remains the only series production car with three fully locking differentials for the rear, the center and the front, each separately activated using these classic chromed dashboard buttons. Uh, engage these or the low range gearbox and you'll also get three further G mode driving settings, trail, sand and rock. Uh, and these tailor vehicle settings specifically for the train in question. Now, as before, there's a four ETS four-wheel electronic traction system that transfers power only to the wheels with the grip to use it and it works in our experience even in the most glutinous bog. And the result of all this, well quite simply it's a car that will get you through almost anything with progress that you can monitor on the central command displays vehicle data screen. Now this shows altitude, breakover angle, um, inclination, compass readings and the four-wheel drive setup. As you cruise along trails you might struggle to walk across. Now some other capable SUVs scrabble their way across tracks like those, but a Gelanda wagon simply laughs at them and after a while you stop worrying about whether any given challenge is passable and you just crank up the 16 speaker Burmester sound system and just leave it to do its thing. Thanks to 241 millimeters of ground clearance, uh, the G350D has an approach angle of 30.9 degrees, a departure angle of 29.9 degrees, and a breakover angle of 25.7 degrees. Uh, you can drive it across a slope of up to 35 degrees, and you can attempt an upward incline of up to 45 degrees. Uh, this G63 has fractionally less ground clearance, but we'd still be surprised if it wasn't able to embarrass a Range Rover in the wilderness. Um, when it comes to the uh, kinds of terrain that this Gelander Wagen can take in its stride, other luxury SUVs just simply need not apply.
Of course, most of the time, the most challenging environment that your jig class will have to face is the school run. Um, a few issues with regard to that still remain. Uh, the appalling turning circle, uh, the limited rear vision, but largely it's been transformed in terms of its day-to-day -day usability uh, to the point where it could, as promised, now be a viable only car. But of course, if you can afford one of these, you almost certainly won't need it to be. Uh, you'll buy a G Wagen instead because you want something unique. And we're pleased to report that it still is. By anyone's reckoning, this is an unlikely fashion accessory. Yet, despite a set square shape with the aerodynamic qualities of a semi-detached house, that is exactly what this G-Class has become. This modern era version is still known by brand loyalists as a W463 series model, but it's very different to earlier Jolanda Wagens that shared that classic designation. The completely new body being 53 millimeters longer, 64 mils wider, and 15 millimeters taller than before, and built of different grades of steel, with aluminium now adopted for the wings, the bonnet and the doors. As ever though, it's still handcrafted for Mercedes by Magna Steyr in Graz, Austria, each G taking over 140 hours to produce. An incredible amount of effort has gone into preserving the style and feel of the original, disguising the fact that only three parts have been carried over. The giant spare wheel cover bolted to the tailgate, uh, the headlamp washers and the classic push-button door handles. Other elements look the same, but they've been completely re-engineered. Uh, the design team spent ages, for example, perfecting the click-snap bolt action sound of the central locking so that that replicated the original. And rumour has it that over 5 million euros were spent getting these classic hippopotamus nostril front indicators to conform to modern safety standards. Now they now retract into the bodywork in an accident. Uh, there's also plenty else that looks the same but isn't. Uh, this military-style upright flat windscreen, for example, it's embellished by a signature from Gottlieb Daimler in the bottom right-hand corner, and this time it's raked by a further degree. And the round headlights, uh, which now gain full LED beams, or as in this case, multi-beam LED technology, which adapts them to the road and to other road users. The grille's been subtly redesigned too. It features horizontal slats with the G350D and vertical ones with this G63 petrol variant. Move to the side and the classic cues continue. The waistline rubbing strip punctuated by the chunky door handles, the old style protruding door hinges, even the rain gutter has been retained. Look closely though and you realise that this is now a much more sophisticated product. Uh, the squarical wheel arches and the chunky bumpers seem now to be a more integral part of the design and less like add-on features. And the surface quality and the panel fit is now of a different level. One at last befitting to the kind of thing you'd expect from a six-figure SUV. Uh, the wheels are larger too. Now, our market doesn't bother with anything less than a 20-inch rim size, and on request, you can specify 21 inches, as is the case here with these five twin spokers, or even 22-inch alloys. Uh, you might be tempted to think that the rear styling hasn't changed much either, but of course it has. Uh, a Jolanda Wagen without a tailgate mounted spare wheel would look wrong. Uh, this G-Class remains the only large super luxury SUV to retain one, but there's no reason why this appendage should obscure rear vision quite so much. So the rear window, that's been um, widened around it. And new LED tail lamps sit above a revised bumper, which now features vertical styling strips either side of the number plate recess. As usual though, uh, what's rather more important is the stuff that you can't see. Now a rugged ladder frame chassis has been retained but it's been completely redesigned and all that new metalwork has allowed for a huge 55% improvement in torsional rigidity and a 170 kilo weight saving. A G-Wagen still tips the scales at around two and a half tonnes though. Time to take a seat in the cabin. Now these retro door handles remain an acquired taste and when the vault-like door swings open, 
uh, you're treated to a steep climb up to the seats past shockle proofed badging. Now, this references the fact that this Jolanda Wagen's development wasn't signed off until it had uh, driven 178 consecutive times up and down the engineering team's rock strewn Schlockel mountain test course. That's a distance of over 6,000 kilometres across a steep, arduous, boulder strewn track that would, well, just defeat just about any other SUV. Right, we're inside. You'd certainly know that you were in a new era G-Wagen here, primarily because this modern model features the widescreen cockpit display that we've previously seen in all of Mercedes' more conventional large models, uh, with a 12.3-inch central command infotainment screen bonded seamlessly to a digital instrument display of the same size. Uh, the analogue dials that are offered in continental Europe that some might think uh, more appropriate to G-Wagen heritage aren't available in our market. Uh, it does seem a touch incongruous to adopt all this modern tech and then slap right next to it this great old-fashioned dash-mounted grab handle. Plus, uh, you might also think, correctly, that this appendage would rather get in the way of airbag deployment. At further great expense, the airbags have been redesigned to spring out around it. To be honest, there weren't many other characteristic g Wagen interior features that were worth carrying over into this more enlightened era. Uh, the high-mounted chrome finish switches for the three differential locks, perhaps. We've still got those. And as before, there's virtually no distance at all from the dash to the upright windscreen. Um, all of that is very much a part of the old-school feel. Uh, now, to build on that, the development team felt the need to reference the exterior in this cabin redesign. So the shape of the round headlights is, for instance, replicated by the circular jet engine style air vents and these little corner dash top speakers, uh, well, they're supposed to reference the squarical shape of those iconic front indicators. Of course, there are things about earlier g bargains that even loyalists might like to consign to the past. Uh, it's no longer necessary to crash your elbows against the doors or intrude with twirling arms into the front passenger's comfort zone when you're performing complex manoeuvres. Uh, up front, that larger body has released 68 mils more elbow room and 38 millimetres more shoulder room. And there's 38 millimetres more legroom too. It all makes a lot of difference. Uh, just as significantly, uh, the previous model may have been built to last, but its fixtures and fittings simply weren't appropriate for a six-figure SUV. Now, that's changed and build quality from the Magnus Stair factory. The same plant that screws together the Jaguar's I-Pace is also vastly better. Uh, Mercedes hasn't been afraid to move the gear selector to a column-mounted stalk either. That controller's previous position, low down on the centre console, is now occupied by the usual shiny black Mercedes protuberance uh, which manages all the infotainment needs. Now a rotary dial here uh, swivels, slides and pushes and that's positioned below a higher surface touchpad which uh, allows letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right hand drive model of course there is the awkwardness of doing that with your left hand. This is your main access control point for the center dash infotainment screen, which is ever on a Mercedes, delivers the usual wondrous graphics and vast resources of the brand's command media setup, which works as usual with Lingotronic voice control, if you can be bothered to try to master that. Uh, particularly nice are the engine, vehicle and dynamic data screens in the vehicle section, which show real-time readouts as you drive. Uh, in addition, there's all the usual DAB audio infotainment stuff to of course along with 3d mapping and live traffic information plus you can bluetooth connect in your smartphone or use the android auto or apple carplay screen mirroring systems um, in addition uh, the command package provides a media segment which will give you a web browser for things like facebook and also a useful mb apps section now this includes weather reports access to internet radio and a useful local search function that allows you to find anything from a filling station to a fish restaurant, uh, a passenger terminal to a parking space. 
And did you ever think you'd be able to create an integrated Wi-Fi hotspot in a G-Wagon? Well, you've got one here. Uh, business buyers will also particularly like the command system's in-car office feature. Uh, that's a Mercedes Me Connect service, which allows drivers use of certain office functions directly in the vehicle and access to important data, almost as if they were in their office. Um, in-car office uses, for example, the locations of calendar entries and automatically transfers those to the car's navigation system. Uh, the user can also dial into a telephone conference on the basis of a calendar entry and then the system will automatically detect the required PIN access code before simultaneously dialing it. All that's needed is an active data connection uh, which actually might be quite difficult to get in the kind of territory that a G-Class is likely to be most at home in. Now, quite a few of the command screen functions are also duplicated onto the TFT instrument binnacle cockpit display and controlled via these uh, neat little smartphone style touch pads on the now much smarter three spoke Napa leather trim steering wheel. Uh, the left hand pad controls the infotainment monitor while the right hand one adjusts the readout between the two main dials which on this G63 model includes an AMG display with a boost gauge, uh, temperature readings, a g-force meter and a race circuit lap counter although quite why you'd need that latter feature on any kind of g-class we're not quite sure uh, there is also a design screen which allows you to customize the instrument monitor ahead of you via three settings uh, now the classic and sport layouts give you two virtual dials or you can choose a so-called progressive setup and that focuses on one gauge uh, the bottom part of which can depict a neat safety assistance graphic if required uh, with all the options you can set up the right of the instrument monitor to show a rev counter uh, navigation information uh, date information or an eco display that helps you to drive more efficiently what else? Uh, well, you'll like the driving position, even though it is rather out of line with the pedals, mainly because it positions you more commandingly than in any SUV we can think of. Uh, most owners will want the superb leather seats trimmed in this quilted Napa leather, and the G63 gets them in standard active multi-contour form with side bolsters that adapt themselves through the corners. Uh, you can get various bespoke finishes for this area around the infotainment controller at the bottom of the centre stack um, that trimming also extends forward to cover this uh, lidded cup holder area uh, that rather neatly includes a slot for the vehicle key there aren't many other areas to put things uh, there is a double lidded box with twin usb points and an sd card slot between the seats here and the door bins are reasonably sized but there's nowhere for your sunglasses and the glove box is rather small um, although it does incorporate coin slots and a pen clip as for all-round visibility, well, it's never been a G-Wagen strong point, but there shouldn't be any issues now. Thin front A-pillars certainly help your view forwards, and those raised indicators act like uh, gunship sighters for when you're parking. Uh, the larger rear window does indeed improve rearward visibility around that huge rear wheel, but you still can't see much through it, so you're really going to need the surround view camera. Uh, now, that is standard, providing you don't make the mistake of ordering a G350D variant without the almost essential optional premium equipment line pack. Uh, it's a great setup with various viewing options, including two that uh, specifically help you in hitching up that standard tow bar. Okay, let's move rearwards. Uh, you'll notice the need to give the door a good slam. Uh, door shutting is one of the most annoying things about this car. The latches only click shut after a really assertive push, and you'll spend the first few weeks of ownership continually asking passengers to reshut their doors. Now, it would have been nice if that could have been improved, but quite a lot else about the rear seat travelling experience in a G-Wagen has been. Uh, we're not going to get carried away though, this is still probably the least space efficient car that we can think of. Uh, sitting back here you'd never know you were in an SUV that was nearly 5 metres long, but it is vastly more passenger friendly than it used to be, with plentiful headroom and the fresh platform freeing up a massive 150 millimetres 
more legroom. Uh, Mercedes also references 27 millimeters more shoulder room and 56 mils more elbow room. But the reality, once you're in situ, is that there still isn't really room to sit three adults across the back seat, which you'd expect there would be in an SUV of this size. Any decent large SUV costing half as much will feel far more accommodating. At least the central transmission tunnel is notably low, despite the chunky all-wheel traction driveline. Uh, you're looked after with reading lights, seat back pockets, and a fold-down centre armrest with twin cup holders. Uh, and you can specify a couple of rear seat entertainment screens back here if you want to push the boat out a bit for the benefit of back seat folk. Uh, the centre console offers twin little circular vents, replicating the style of those up front uh, above a digital climate readout. Uh, just below this is a pull-out ashtray. That's a curious inclusion in these enlightened times and a rather more useful 5-volt plug-in point. Forget any thoughts of being able to have fold-out third-row seating. You'd need much greater interior space efficiency than this car can provide in order to be able to accommodate that. As it is, there's just about enough space back here for a half reasonably sized boot. Because of the tailgate-mounted spare wheel, you have to access it uh, via this inconvenient side-hinged arrangement. That's particularly awkward for markets like ours that drive on the left. Once everything's opened up, you'll find 667 litres of space. Uh, now, that's not much less than the brand's much cheaper GLS and GLE SUV models will give you, despite the way that this area is pinched by the audio system subwoofer on the left and the fuel tank on the right. Uh, the upright tailgate helps in that regard. There's there's a low loading lip too, although it's impractically embellished with this easily scratchable chromed strip. A heavy duty rubber mat protects the floor and it's surrounded by four silver tie down points. Uh, there are bag hooks on both sides and on the left there's a netted storage area and a 12 volt point. This long zipped up pouch here at the back holds a rolled up loading net and a ski hatch is provided for longer items. Uh, you really notice the lack of interior space efficiency when you push forward the 6040 split folding backrest though, where something like a Mercedes GLS would give you 2,300 litres of space in that configuration. Uh, G-Class delivers just 1,246 litres and that's way less than a C-Class estate. Hand built by Steyr Puch in Austria, this is an exclusive car, which as you've probably already guessed, means that it's gonna cost you a suitably exclusive price. Things kick off with the G350D straight six diesel variant, which from the launch of this improved model costs 94,000 pounds and is only offered in our market in AMG line trim. Here though, we've opted for the Mercedes AMG G63 four liter petrol twin turbo V8 variant that over 60% of G-Class buyers in this country choose, uh, which from launch costs from just over 143,000 pounds. Now, this car has flagship status in the Mercedes SUV lineup, but that doesn't mean it's the largest of the company's 4x4s. The brand's GLS model will save you around £20,000 in diesel guys and nearly £40,000 in petrol V8 form. Plus, it offers two extra boot-mounted seats, so you've really got to want this Gulando wagon as an alternative. But likely customers will. There is, after all, nothing aside from perhaps a Hummer that you can directly compare it to. The only SUVs that can compete with a G Wagen's extreme capability off-road, contenders like Land Rover's Defender and Jeep's Wrangler, are much less capable on tarmac. And anyway, they sit in much cheaper and less luxurious market segments. Super luxury SUVs that are comparably priced and sized against this Mercedes, uh, the Range Rover, for example, don't have this car's classic military surplus feel, nor are they as capable off-road. Whichever G-Class model you choose, you should find your car to be very well equipped, as you'd have a right to expect for the huge upfront prices being asked, as well as its mechanical staples, permanent four-wheel drive with three 100% locking differentials, plus a 9G Tronic auto transmission with cruise control and a variable speed limiter. Uh, the G350D comes complete with, uh, well, quite a lot. Uh, there are 20-inch AMG alloy wheels, LED high-performance headlights, metallic paint, 
paint, LED tail lights, uh, side running boards and the trailer coupling that almost all buyers want. Inside a G350D, you'll find the brand's widescreen cockpit display, a seamless amalgamation of a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster and a 12.3-inch command centre dash infotainment screen comes as standard. Uh, via this, you can activate an eight-colour ambient lighting system and smartphone integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And there's also Lingvatronic voice control and hard disk navigation. Other G350D features include AMG line leather upholstery, AMG floor mats, uh, a luggage protection net, power adjustable steering column, uh, heated front and rear seats, Thermotronic three zone climate control and a keyless go starting function. Uh, now you also get a dynamic select driving mode system with comfort, sport, eco and individual options. Most G350D customers also tick the box to pay £6,000 extra for the optional premium equipment line pack, which adds in an electric sunroof, a 16-speaker, 10-channel, 590-watt Burmester surround sound system and multi-beam LED headlamps that automatically adapt to the road and other motorists. That premium pack also gives you adaptive damping, a 360-degree surround view camera system, an upgraded 64-colour ambient lighting setup and an interior air ionization package. That'll all take the asking price to around six figures, which is nice. Of course, for nearly 50% extra, you'd expect this top G63 Mercedes-AMG model to offer a lot more, and inevitably it does. There is, of course, everything you'd get on a G350D specified with a premium equipment line pack, so tick off everything we just mentioned, plus much else. Uh, the AMG engineering elements include a quicker shifting AMG speed shift version of the 9G Tronic Auto gearbox and an AMG ride control version of the adaptive damping package. Uh, there are AMG red brake calipers and an AMG sports exhaust system with chrome trimmed twin tailpipes. Uh, the radiator grille is of a unique design as are the 20 inch 10 spoke AMG alloy wheels. Plus there are illuminated AMG door sill panels and Nappa leather features on both the AMG performance steering wheel and the ventilated multi-contour AMG sports seats. Uh, as you expect, both G-Class variants come complete with all the elements of the Mercedes Me Connect remote online services package, which works via a free app. Uh, now, this reminds you when a service is due, and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. Um, in addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast breakdown recovery and an alarm feature that will tell you when your parking meter is just about to expire. Plus, you'll be able to lock or unlock the car from wherever you are and locate your vehicle's position if you've somehow forgotten where you parked it. Um, if you're brave enough to lend your G-Class out to someone else, uh, then a geofencing feature will alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if the car's ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show its position anywhere in the world. Um, it's also worth mentioning that as part of the uh, standard command infotainment screen package, uh, you'll get what Mercedes calls car to X communication. Now, this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system, and it will see uh, your G-Class sending data on uh, driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other the Mercedes drivers. Uh, on to options. Now, if you've chosen the G350D and you're likely to be regularly using it off-road, you'd be wise to specify the optional underguard to protect the underside of the vehicle from rocks and tree stumps. Uh, protective grills are available for the headlamps too. Uh, this G63 AMG model is, of course, more road-orientated. And for that, there's an AMG driver's package, which increases the car's electronically limited top speed to 149 miles an hour. That's a software tweak for for which Mercedes will charge you a cool £2,000. 
What else? Uh, well, business folk will find the optional car telephony package useful, and that allows even easier connection of a mobile phone using the Bluetooth SIM access protocol, and it uses the car's exterior aerial to improve reception. Uh, for wealthy family folk, there's a rear seat entertainment system, which adds in a couple of 10-inch touchscreens to the rear. Uh, there's also a winter package, which will give you a heated windscreen and an independent fuel-fired heater that can be preset to to heat the interior prior to your arrival. Other options relate mainly to aesthetic embellishments. Uh, for the G350D, there's a night package, which adds dark tinted glass, black bumper elements, uh, a darkened finish for the indicators, the tail lights and the headlights, and further black trimming for the exterior mirrors, uh, the wheels, the spare wheel ring, and the exterior protective strip. Uh, the AMG night package that's been fitted to this G63 test car further builds on this with larger 21 or 22 inch wheels and an underguard painted in obscure city in black. Uh, across the G-Class range, as we said earlier, metallic paint is standard. We've got obsidian black here, but you can opt for various non-metallic shades if you'd rather, or pay a bit more for one of the various Designio metallic shades, or a lot more for one of the fearsomely expensive Designio Magno paint colours. Uh, various 20, 21 and 22 inch wheel designs are available too. You can spend plenty to upgrade the interior too. On this G63, we'd be tempted by the optional AMG Performance Dynamica Microfiber Trim Steering Wheel. That's finished in either Nappa leather or carbon fiber. The G350D also has steering wheel options, five different ones. And you can trim the lower part of the center stack with ash, walnut, high gloss wood, metal weave, carbon fiber, or piano lacquer finishes. Leather upholstery, as we've said, is a standard G-Class feature, but many owners like to embellish that. On the G350D, an AMG line Nappa leather package trims the seats and the upper part of the dashboard in softer stitched Nappa leather, as well as adding a black Dynamica microfiber roof liner and silver shadow colored air vents. Or you can add an even pricier Dezinho Napa leather package to your G350D, which gives you uh, diamond quilted leather, full dashboard trimming, and massaging climate controlled front seats. Uh, for this G63, you can add in an AMG Napa leather interior with full Napa dashboard and upholstery trimming. Or, as in this case, uh, you can add the AMG exclusive Napa leather package. Now, that will give you uh, quilted leather finishing, massaging front seats, and an upper dashboard that's treated with even softer Lugano leather. Uh, enough with all that, let's switch to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes. Uh, let's give you some highlights from the roster this time around. Uh, now, as you'd expect in this day and age, autonomous braking is now included. Uh, that's the Mercedes Active Brake Assist system, which uses the usual forward-facing camera to scan the road ahead for potential nose-to-tail collisions, uh, warning you and priming the brakes if one's detected. Now, if you don't respond or perhaps if you aren't able to, then the car will automatically break itself to reduce the severity of any potential resulting collision. And of course, there's much more. Uh, both variants get, as standard, the brand's Active Distance Assist Distronic setup. That's basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control that automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and which can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Uh, there's also Blind Spot Assist to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of another vehicle and Attention Assist, which constantly monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. Now, if that's detected, uh, then you'll be warned to stop for uh, restorative coffee. Active Lane Keeping Assist warns you if you drift over lane delineation markings and subtly steers you back to where you ought to be. And the pre-safe package senses if a collision is imminent and in a fraction of a second it closes any open windows, it tenses the seat belts and it primes the airbags to give you the best possible chance of avoiding injury. 
As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too, including acceleration skid control as part of the ASP stability control setup. Of course, you get traffic sign assist, which can read traffic signs as you pass and display them on the dash. Plus, there's the emergency call system, which is part of the Mercedes Me Connect services package, which automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, there's an eye-size child seat attachment system for the outer rear seats and rear left and right side bags are optional. Ultimately though, when it comes to G-Class safety provision, it's the sheer bulk of this SUV that'll protect you most. Anything you hit will inevitably come off worse. Let's get one thing straight, there's no inexpensive way to run a G-Class. Well, there's no inexpensive way to run any super luxury SUV, and this is no exception. Now you might think that opting for the G350D diesel variant would shield you from running cost excess, uh, but that's only true to a certain extent. Uh, the combined cycle fuel economy of that black pump fueled variant um, is a still not especially impressive 29.4 mpg on the combined cycle, and that could easily fall to the low 20s with spirited tarmac use or on gnarly off-road trails. To be fair, the official quoted figure is a reasonable improvement on the previous diesel model's 25.2 mpg showing, and that's thanks primarily to this second generation design's substantial 170 kilo reduction in weight. Uh, go for this G63 Mercedes AMG V8 petrol version, and you can, of course, throw any thoughts of running cost efficiency just out of the window. Um, again, there is an improvement in the officially quoted figure, uh, thanks to the body weight reduction, and also to the fact that the uh, four liter V8 features cylinder deactivation, so that under light throttle loads, it chugs about on only four cylinders. Uh, this switch is uh, designated when operational by a little icon at the top of the instrument cluster. Um, now unfortunately those engineering improvements don't make uh, as much difference as you might hope they would. The old 5.5 litre AMG V8 G-Wagen managed 17.8 mpg on the combined cycle. This 4 litre one theoretically returns 21.4 mpg. In reality though if you drive this car regularly as the burning V8 repeatedly encourages you to you'll only achieve um, half of that quite often. And not, of course, that anyone likely to be able to afford a 150,000 pound, 585 horsepower Jolanda Wagen will ever be unduly bothered by the thought of such excess. Uh, they might, though, be more bothered by the frequency with which the rate of thirst makes it necessary to continually refill the 100 litre fuel tank. What else? Um, well, both G-Class models get an eco start-stop function to cut the engine when you don't need it uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, plus, on the G350D, there's a gliding feature which disconnects the engine from the transmission to save fuel at cruising speeds. Uh, the diesel, as you'd expect, uses an AdBlue system to cleanse its fuel of impurities uh, using an additive from a reservoir, and that'll need to be topped up at regular services. Uh, G350D drivers also get an extra eco setting as part of the Dynamic Select driving mode setup. Um, now, that eco option is provided to focus all of the car's systems on frugality. Now, this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve, and it also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating um, of the heated rear window and of the air conditioning. You can also bring up various displays that'll help. An eco display grades your driving based on acceleration, on decelerating and constancy of speed, showing in real time the bonus frugality that you've achieved through careful driving since the start of your trip. Uh, there is also a fuel consumption section on the Facious Command central display screen, and that will give you some graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum efficiency. What else? Well, bear in mind that both versions of this car will be subject to the government's tax levy for models costing over £40,000. That means road tax will stand at £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. And the other thing that we'll need to tell you is that the comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme. Now, that delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. 
Servicing for both engines is every year or 12,500 miles, whichever comes around first. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package. Now that takes care of routine maintenance and it spreads the cost of regular servicing and guarantees uh, the price of parts and labour for up to four services. And it also covers the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, uh, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. There's an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit's due. And it's also worth mentioning that the uh, Mercedes Me Connect Services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability, which enables your G-Class to monitor wear and tear items and to alert your local dealer to let you know when something needs seeing to. You can also insure your car in Mercedes, although most company drivers will have that included in their lease cost. Uh, either way, your premium won't be cheap. Uh, for this G63, it's a top of the shop group 50. That's for the question of residual values. Well, the G-Class is a sought-after used buy, so you can expect uh, depreciation to be class leadingly low on the G350D at least. Um, it'll certainly be way better than you'll get from, say, a Range Rover. Uh, according to independent experts, after three years and or 60,000 miles, you can expect a G350D to still be worth 53% of its original value. Here's the car that tops our guilty pleasures list. Whether you want to make a really big statement with your choice of SUV or you simply want the most capable, road-sensible off-roader there is, the Mercedes G-Class offers a money-no-object solution. With a design dating back to the 70s, it may be old in concept, but it remains classily cool. With an appeal that remains undimmed against the changing fads of automotive fashion. Judging this car by the usual criteria just doesn't work. As ever with the Gelandewagen, the normal rules resolutely don't apply. What's changed is the way that with this new era model, that appeal has been very cleverly updated. It's thoroughly modern, but all the things that make a G-Class special and unique remain intact. Now, we could have been served up a lifestyle orientated copy of the original, but this remains the real thing. Which is no mean achievement, given the fact that for the first time in nearly half a century of production, the G-Wagen is an SUV that you could reasonably live with as an only car. <laughs> Provided, of course, you don't mind its ostentatious gangster swagger, its military demeanour and its prodigious running costs. What you get in return is something that in comparison is missing from obvious rivals, character. If all you want is to impress other oligarchs, then, uh, well, this wild G63 variant would be ideal. But if you really want to experience everything that a G-Wagen can do, then the G300D version is the only choice to make. Yes, of course, the high pricing in both cases is difficult to justify, and you could spend far less on a larger, more practical and better handling luxury SUV. But G-Class buyers want something more than just another luxury SUV. They want something exclusive and something more capable in the world's toughest terrains than just about anything else on four wheels. It's at home anywhere, from Afghanistan to the Amazon, from Kensington to the King's Road, and it is quite simply unique.